go. Good morning, everybody. It's a strange, strange Palm Sunday, and it's going to be a weird Holy Week. And honestly, I wanted to be able to put on my bathrobe and sit here with a cup of coffee looking at you this way, <laughs> as I hope some of you are doing on the other side of the camera. But this is what you get. May God bless us all in this very, very strange time. I'd like to begin the sermon time this morning actually singing a song. Many of you came by and got your palms in the last few days, and there are still some palms outside the front door of the church. If you want to get yours on a normal Palm Sunday, we'd be gathered around here and marching around the property and letting the community know we're here. We'll have to make do with what we've got. And I'd like you to join me in singing All Glory, Laud, and Honor, just the first verse. If you know it, please sing along. If you don't know it, tap your toes. All glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name comest, the King and Blessed One. All glory, laud, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. And if there's any karma in the world, Joe and the other members of the music team that would normally be over here are saying, Lord, we've got to get back to church soon because <laughs> anybody can do better than that. Thank you and God bless you. For the sermon today, if you've been following along in the Sunday Bulletin, you know that we've had the reading from Philippians and we've had that very long Passion Gospel from Matthew this year. But the passage that I'd like to use for the sermon and the basis for the sermon today is from that reading from Paul to the Philippians. If you've been in church any length of time, you have undoubtedly heard this particular passage I'm going to quote. And if you haven't heard it, it's always worth repeating. But Paul had to write this to the Philippians and he was also writing, us to, uh, writing it to us as well. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, although he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. A lot of words there, I understand. And the very shortened version of it, though Jesus was in the form of God, he gave it all up and took on the form of a slave, from the form of God to the form of a slave instead of the form of God. I'm going to use a little illustration here at the baptismal font, and I can't remember who told me this once upon a time. If I ever remember who it was, I'll be sure to give them credit. But they used this illustration of a water jar here and the baptismal font here but this is the symbol for Jesus. We'll wait a moment while our camera person gets things organized here. <laughs> this is the Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, emptied himself and took on the form of a slave. It's natural for us because that's where the action is, to watch the water flowing from the pitcher down into the bowl. And our eyes want to go to the action around the baptismal bowl here and the water that's there. But the important part is that water jug of Jesus emptying himself and taking on the form of a slave. All that is of God, all of that form of God, all of that Godness of Jesus was given up and he took on the form of a slave. 
When we hear the gospel lesson for today, it's so easy to be able to picture exactly what Paul was talking about in Jesus' suffering and his crucifixion, his sorrows on the cross, and his death on the cross. That in this, this act of the crucifixion and the horror of the crucifixion, we see Jesus saying, I'm giving up everything that I could have held on to. And I, instead of that, I take on this form of a slave. I'm giving it all. And if that's where the sermon ended, we could say, even though it's Lent, hallelujah. We could say that's wonderful news because Jesus did this for us. He gave up everything that he had in that equality with God to take on the slave, to take on our nature, and we could say thank you. What a gift. Thank you. But you know too much because you know that Jesus a lot of times takes things a little bit further than we might think they ought to go. If you remember the events of Maundy Thursday evening when Jesus took off his robe and wrapped a towel around his waist and went around washing the feet of the disciples, and when he was done, he put his own robe back on and he said to the disciples gathered there, do you see what I've done for you? You call me a master and so I am. But I've also taken on this role of a servant to wash your feet. And what I've done for you, you are to do for others. Jesus pouring himself out of all that he had of God Jesus would say, you're to do that for others as well. Pour out everything that you've got. Put it all on the line for others. And we see this. It's in the news. It's in the evening news, the morning news, every news break that they have during the day. We see the stories about people who are reacting to the COVID virus. And they're saying in those scenes of the hospital emergency rooms, the, the doctors that are there, the nurses, the technicians, and even honestly, the person who's got the mop and the pail on the side of the room, and he's the one that's there to keep, or she's the one that's there to keep everything clean for everybody else. They're putting it all on the line for those that they love, for those they don't even know, but they're putting it on the line for others. In our own parish, we have what I call the pillowcase brigade, that has stopped making pillowcases for a while, they're making face masks and they're delivering them to places in Aurora where the homeless of Aurora can use them as a face mask, a shield, not one of the official ones, but a face mask to try and keep this illness that they might have away from others and what other people might have away from them. It's in some of the people of this parish that have said, I can't do much. I'm not able to act much. There isn't much that I can say, but I'm going to be able to help out in the way that somebody else maybe needs some groceries. Somebody else needs a little financial assistance. I can give, and so I'm going to give. And it might be that you're one of those people that's just absolutely paralyzed by what's going on. If you are, I understand. I've been there too, and I come back and visit that place every now and then, where you just feel there isn't anything that can be done, nothing that can be said. I feel absolutely helpless, and if you're in that place, it's all right. You might not have to stay in that place, but if that's where you are, Jesus isn't going to love you any less. But Jesus is saying to you and me, I've poured myself out for you, and I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I'm commanding you to pour yourself out for others. And so let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And let us pray. We pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, 
who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And God bless you all.